Music is a huge part of my life. I'm always listening to music, whether that be in the shower, when I'm working out, working on projects, or just going about my day. I listen to a pretty wide range of music, and my mood and activity influences the songs that I listen to. So that got me thinking, can you track and map the mood of the world based on music taste? Over a couple of weeks, I started developing a project that would gather and visualize the data in such a way that you could easily spot the trends in music taste and begin to analyze its relationship with the population sentiment. And here's the finished product. But before we dig into it, let's have a quick look at how it works. First, we use a web scraper to get all the Spotify charts data. Then we use the Spotify web API to get data of the audio features of each track. Once we've got this data, we combine it to create a score for every country, every week for each audio feature. And then finally, we visualize this all in a Dash web app coded in Python. Now let's have a look at the web app. I've dropped a link in the description to a live version of this project. Let's start off with the eight audio features. So first we have valence. This is how positive the music is. Then we have mode, which is whether it's in a major key or a minor key, one being major, and the other six are pretty self-explanatory. There are five ways in which we visualize this data. First, we have a map, which compares the current score for each audio feature against a country's history. So here we have it on default as valence. So this is showing how positive a country's current music taste is compared to its history. We can use a slider at the bottom to see how this has changed over time. The reason these scores are relative to the country's history is to be able to compare all the countries. This is because different countries have different audio profiles. This takes us to these two charts over here. This chart over here shows us how the average score of an audio feature compares to the rest of the countries, with one meaning it has the highest and zero the lowest. And this one here shows the distribution of the scores. So the lower the peak number on the left here, the more spread out the scores are. Now we can select different countries by clicking on them in the map. So now if we compare the UK's audio feature profile to Brazil, we can see that Brazilian music is more positive, more energetic, more danceable, and also the most live. We've got a time series graph of the Z scores down here in the bottom left. You can double click on a series to isolate it and here see that Brazilian music has been becoming more positive over the past three years. Another trend you can easily spot is Christmas. Going back to the UK, we can see that Christmas music is not very danceable, not particularly energetic and typically in the major key. And finally, we can see that there's a dynamic description for the selected country's current sentiment. Music choice could reflect your current mood, or maybe it reflects the opposite as you try to influence your mood with music. Maybe your country has just experienced great weather and you find that this is reflected in the data. As I mentioned before, you can find a live version of this project linked in the description below so you can investigate the data yourself. Let me know in the comments below if you find any interesting observations. I'll also put a link to the GitHub code in the description and you can check out my websites for this and similar projects. I'm also planning to do some behind the scenes videos which will be standalone guides focusing on specific features and skills that I've used in this project such as using SQLite databases or interacting with a Spotify web API. So if you'd be interested in those videos make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to find out when they come out. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like and definitely go check out the live project using the link in the description. As always, you can drop me a message on LinkedIn, leave a comment down below or tweet me on Twitter for any questions or comments you may have. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.